Welcome to Vespers. It's October the 28th, and we're glad you're here. Friends, we have a lot of prayer requests that we continue to lift up. Tom has finished his second week of chemo, so this week he will be off, and then next week he will go through another series of scans. We're glad that Terry Helms, that suffered a stroke last week, is home now and has begun his rehab. So many others of ours, Joy Honeycutt is in rehab, several others, Phyllis Helms is in rehab, but we want to continue to lift up the family of Stephanie Korn, especially um, remembering the death of her father, Dr. Jim Quarles. If you've not had an opportunity to read his obituary, go back and read that. He was an amazing man. And we want to continue to lift up the family of Deb Mays. On Monday, we had a great celebration of her life. She meant so much to us. And all of us that knew her, our lives are blessed because we had an interaction with her. Friends, let us pray. Lord, as we come to you this day, it seems as if our prayer list continues to grow day by day. And we are so amazed that all we need to do is lift up our voices to you. You listen to us, whether we're in the quietness of the church, in the middle of a grocery store, at a red light, driving to take our children to a sporting event or to practice. Wherever your children are and wherever they pause to have conversation with you, we're reminded that you are always more willing to hear us pray than we are to pray. But Lord, we call the name of several people And for every person that we called, there's probably four or five or or many more that we could have called the name of. Lord, in this moment of silence, we lift our loved ones up to you. Lord, may you anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, if they need healing, if they need hope. For so many are growing weary these days and they continue to ask the question, when will this time of isolation finally be over? We truly don't know the answer. Lord, so many of ours have already gone to the polls to vote. Others are still thinking about filling their ballots out at home. And yet, still others will wait until Election Day on next Tuesday. If they've already voted or they're contemplating, Lord, we thank you that we live in a country that we have the right to vote. And we thank you that you give us the exercise of fulfilling, of going to the polls. Lord, tonight we just thank you for hearing our prayers and for reaching down and touching us in our greatest need. Lord, we love you and we want to serve you. So give us the courage to get to our feet, and to be a witness for you, wherever we are and whatever we do. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.
message tonight, I want to share just a little bit of scripture with you from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Listen to these words. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. What in the world does that mean, to be surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses? As you can see, we're here in St. John's Pumpkin Patch. It has been a fabulous year for people to come. Today we received our third shipment and people have just been buying and buying and buying and they're getting ready for Halloween. But do you know in the church what Halloween is called? It's called O Hallowed Eve. And that is supposedly the night before All Saints Day. And it's the night when saints come out and supposedly roam all over the earth the day before we celebrate them. And so in modern tradition, we have children that will grow up, will, will dress up as witches and Mary Poppins and police officers and robots and ghosts and every kind of character you can think of. And especially in a year that we've been having when so many events have been canceled. I was so proud of our church and Mallory Capps and, and her team that she has put together. For last week, the rain acted as if it did not want to cease, but she was not gonna give in to that. And 20 of you came and you decorated your trunks in amazing ways. And not only did you decorate your trunks, but you provided treats for our children and they came and they had all kind of fun, trick-or-treating right here in our parking lot in, an, in, in daylight. They didn't have to worry about going and, and being exposed to COVID because we practiced all the proper sanitations that we needed to. But you know, yesterday, actually on Monday, we celebrated the life of Deb Mays. And one of her friends, Margaret Barber, gave a eulogy at the cemetery. And she was talking about a time long ago when they were children growing up at this church. That before they would go out and trick or treat, they would do something called trick or treating for UNICEF. When I was growing up in Casey, South Carolina, our family did that every single year. Before we were able to go out and trick or treat for ourselves, we had to go to our neighbors with these little coin boxes and we would collect money for people that needed help with vaccinations and, and children that lived in poor countries that didn't have the kind of medical facilities that we have. Friends, we're not going to trick or treat this year for UNICEF, but an awesome thing that we might could do before you go and trick or treat this year, you know, the Fort Mill Care Center is always in need of food. And what if you went by the grocery store and picked up a couple of cans of soup, or maybe you picked up a couple of bags of pasta, or maybe even a bag of rice, or some canned vegetables, or some cereal, or some jelly. It could be the same kind of thing that, that people long time ago did in trick-or-treating for UNICEF. The idea is, before we do something for ourselves, that we would always remember and do something for others. Friends, I hope that you and your family are going to get to have a time of fun and fellowship with Trick or Treat this year. But we are always surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And so we're glad that in Deb's generation, she handed down to us the idea of going trick-or-treating for UNICEF. But today, maybe you can go trick-or-treating at the grocery store for the Fort Mill Care Center. Thank you so much for being with us, and I hope you have a great rest of your week.